Hey, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm revisiting a recurring problem with this Husqvarna push mower uh, model HU800AWDH 2014 with a Honda GCV190 engine. I'm having trouble with it breaking exhaust valve rockers. This mower wasn't running when I got it and I figured out eventually that the exhaust rocker was broken because the exhaust valve guide was migrating out of the case and causing contact with the rocker. I've actually got it running right now but I know it's just a matter of time before the guide migrates out of the case again. So here's a description of all the work I did uh, last season on it. And here's the initial fractured rocker and the piece and the adjustment screw there's the second broken rocker. There's the individual parts, the adjustment screw, the locking nut. Here's a close-up of the cam and how the compression release mechanism actually bumps the exhaust valve to relieve the compression when you're pulling the cord. So in order to combat this exhaust valve guy migrating from the case, um, I'm going to install an extra valve guide seal on the exhaust side. This was a fella on YouTube named Kevin Kyroak. Kevin figured out that he could simply take an extra seal, hollow out the rubber end, and install it on the exhaust side so it would act as a keeper for the valve guide and prevent it from coming out. My plan is to drain the oil out of this thing, and while I've got it over on its side, I'll go ahead and pull the blade so I can sharpen it. Then i got to remove the valve cover, uh, take, take the uh, intake valve retainer and spring apart, replace the seal with the new one that I got, and reassemble that, and then do the same thing on the exhaust side. And then I'll drive the exhaust guide back in until it bottoms out and install the old seal on the exhaust side, reinstall the valve spring and retainer, readjust the valves, and then uh, reinstall the cover. And then of course when I've got all that done, I'll put fresh oil in it and make sure everything's working okay. So I started by draining the oil just so I could have less oil in it while I was working inside the engine. And I figured I would pull the blade off and sharpen it while I had it upside down. And then, of course, I start to work on the front of the engine, and then remove the belt cover. Then with that cover out of the way, I can actually get to the bolts on the valve cover more easily. So the last little tabs on that cover will release it and of course clean up some of the dried grass under there take the screws out of the valve cover and if you can pull your valve cover off by hand without deforming it more power to you but more likely you're going to have to get in there with a screwdriver and pry that loose so you just got to be careful with the screwdriver that you don't score the mating surface on the block. Eventually, once you get it started, it'll pull loose pretty easily. So make sure you set your piston to top dead center. That way your valves can't fall inside the engine. I had that happen to me one time and it's it's dreadful to fix. The springs and retainers are fairly easy to remove by hand. To press the spring a little bit and move the retainer off to the side and there's a cutout to allow that to release. So once I had those apart, I simply put the new seal in on the intake side. And then I'm going to take the intake seal 
and trim the rubber off from it so I can install it on the exhaust side. Now of course I could have used the new seal on the exhaust side, but I figured I would just replace the seal on the intake side before destroying that one. There's what the new seal looks like before it's installed. Simply slides over top of the valve sticking out on the intake side. Intake is on the right by the carb and the exhaust is on the left by the muffler. So then once you've got the valve seal installed, simply reassemble the spring and the retainer. And once you've snapped that retainer in place, twist it a few turns to make sure it's locked on the valve well. And then take a quarter inch drive socket. I think I used an eight millimeter socket and tap that valve guide back down in until it bottoms out. This was the root cause of all the problems I was having with this engine. This is what kept breaking the rocker on that side that was sticking out too far. I ended up using a utility knife, I tried using a plier to tear it, and then I tried using a twist drill to kind of drill it out, but really the utility knife worked best. Just make sure you don't cut yourself while you're doing it. Get all of that rubber out of the inside of it and then simply install that on the exhaust side like you did with the intake seal. It'll look like that when it's installed. Might be worth mentioning this is the only potential problem I can see with this fix is that adding that little extra bit of space spacer underneath the spring could actually change the pressure on the spring and thereby changing the pressure on the valve, the amount of pressure it puts on the cam inside. So only time will tell. And then simply reassemble your exhaust valve spring and your retainer on the exhaust side. Remember to turn it a few turns to make sure it's fully seated on the valve. These are relatively easy to install by hand, no tools required there. And lastly, you've got to clean this mating surface on the block. I tried using a razor knife and I scored it in a couple of places, so I found out that just using a thumbnail and then wiping it with a dry rag and then blowing away the fragments was about the best method I could come up with. I did have to touch it up a tiny bit on top with a whetstone, but I got a pretty good surface again to seal the cover with. So now you're ready for your rockers and your pins. Make sure your piston is still at top dead center. That lobe on the cam is right in the center of the front. That way there won't be any pressure at all on your rockers as you're installing them and the pins will drop right in. Now you're ready to set your valve lash again. The intake valve is a 0.15 millimeters. So I use the 0.15 feeler gauge to set that one. Get it adjusted until the feeler gauge is snug, still moves, but you can't feel any gap at all under the rocker. Then on the exhaust side, set it at a 0.2 millimeters, just till it's snug on the feeler gauge. Then once you've set them, turn the engine a few turns and then back to top dead center and confirm your clearances one more time. Make sure neither one of them moved on you. Both clearances were good. There was no need for me to have to change anything. So we're ready to seal that cover and put it back on. 
There's what the old cover looked like. It had a lot of sealant. I bent it out of shape. So I had already ordered a new cover. Cleaned it up a little bit with a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel. And then put a bead of fresh sealant down to seal it. This was my least favorite part. Really want to come up with a solution that's better at spreading sealant from a tube. Scrub some of the old silicone off from my mounting bolts and then I'm ready to remount this cover. So the instructions for the RTV say when you apply the sealant, go ahead and assemble your parts. When the sealant is still wet, let finger tighten and then wait for an hour before you apply your final torque. That gives the sealant a little bit of chance to set up before you squeeze it out. And then lastly, fill it up 0.4 liters of SAE30 oil. For this particular engine, when you check the oil level, you make sure you do not screw in the dipstick according to the manufacturer's instructions. You simply set it in the top of the dip tube and pull it out and take a reading. Reinstall the blade. Reinstall the front cover over the belt. And I found that if you lock down the drive handle, it takes that drive belt out of your way and makes that right hand screw a little easier to get to. Final torque on those cover bolts, 103 inch pounds or 1.2 kgfm. Here's the tools that I use to do this job. Quarter inch ratchet, 10 millimeter socket, at least one extension. I also used a nut driver handle in conjunction with my ratchet. Half drive ratchet to remove spark plug, 14 millimeter socket to remove the blade, torque wrench to torque down the nuts, the bolts on the overhead valve cover, slip joint pliers to pull the uh, valve seal off on the intake side a hammer and just about any quarter inch deep socket to drive that valve guide back in place that worked for me it's like an eight millimeter socket to adjust the valves i used an eighth inch wrench and a nine millimeter wrench on the locking nut utility knife to cut away the rubber on the seal feeler gauges to set the valve lash with. Because I was sharpening a blade, I used a die grinder in this case. Um, used a wire brush to clean some of the ATV off, but um, I used my thumbnail to clean the ATV off from the overhead valve mating surface. It was easier than trying to scrape it with a razor blade. Air blow nozzle just to kind of blow away some of the dried grass and some of the leftover RTV silicone. If there is truly a road to hell, it's surely paved with this stuff right here. I hate this stuff. But um, I had to use this to seal the cover again. In fact, between the time I started this project and ended this project, I just went to Amazon and bought a, um, a tube plier that actually helps you apply this stuff better costs about 23 bucks so I'm looking forward to seeing if that works better than trying to squeeze this crap out my hand I used a whetstone because I kind of scored the overhead valve mating surface on the block a little bit and because I changed the oil I used this jug with Rotella SAE 30 simply so I could measure out 0.4 liters of motor oil 
and I used a few a few towels um, that's pretty much it I had compressed air of course to clean things up and a flashlight to poke around with but that's about it so I spent probably two hours working on this but mostly because I was trying to actually record things along the way surely you could do the job in under an hour although you're supposed to wait for an hour for your silicone to set up before you torque the bolts down um, I'd actually been inside this before so I kind of knew my way around but uh, two of the toughest things to do was firstly removing the old cover so if you're gonna do this job you might want to fill throw a few dollars at a new cover um, this one would probably be reusable but with all the silicone on it it's gonna be a mess to clean up and try to bend it back into shape you don't want that doggone thing leaking, so it might not be a bad idea to plan on replacing that with a fresh one. And then I wasn't sure how to get that little bit of rubber out of the valve seal, but a utility knife seemed to be about the best thing for that. I got it out of there. Uh, beyond that, it wasn't too difficult a job. It really isn't.